guys Priscilla here I'm about to start working on a project in the garden I am creating a citrus lane on the side of the house and I'll show you what it looks like so this is going to be the citrus lane so I have cold hardy citrus that I got from Stan McKenzie from McKenzie Farms in South Carolina so right now they are empty and working on the little one is in the way getting them filled up like that so there will eventually be a total of nine of them I'm gonna put one at the end right next to the water barrel but I've got that one there that one semi started and then we're just gonna work our way down and then I've got two mango plants here that I'm actually gonna put in pots and leave on the sides or probably brace them here on either side or put them somewhere else in the garden. But each one of these containers, raised beds, um, will be filled with cold hardy citrus. And I will create an enclosure um, of some sort when it gets cold to protect them from the winter. So this is sort of the before. And I will show you as I go through. I have no question at all. All right. so. As I'm not arguing with the lovely child of mine, he's filling it up somewhat with potting soil. And yes, I'm using potting soil. So this is the stages. We're doing cardboard, mulch, soil, and then we're going to top it off with some more mulch. So cardboard on the bottom to suppress the weeds. Mulch as a bottom layer. Soil. I'm trying to keep it light and loose. Thank you. And then we're going to top it off with um wood chips if you can get the plant put it in the center what does the label stay on that one this so is that is kumquat. a miwa kumquat so that's the one with the sweet outer skin and then the sweet inside i'm gonna stick that right in the middle that's good and then you don't want that too deep because with citrus you want those roots up top to be semi-exposed because they're feeder roots. And then we'll just top it with mulch to keep the moisture in because this is a lot of space. It's a lot of soil and it's going to give them lots of room to expand. So we're going to do one. We'll probably have enough to do this one, this one, and this one. And then we'll just have three more for another day. Alright, so getting them sort of situated. So we've got this filled with mostly soil right now and then wood chips and wood chips and then we're going to start putting the rest of the soil in there and then we're going to top it with more wood chips so just a little bit of info i'm using potting soil for the most part because it's light and it's airy i'm going to amend it over time by composting in place so i'm going to be I'm going to be composting in place using coffee grounds, comfrey, food scraps, you name it, compost tea. So over time I'm going to enrich the soil more so like pretty much every single week because citrus are heavy feeders. But I don't want the um, soil to be compacted with like garden soil mix is usually hard, more compact. But potting soil can be used because one it's got fertilizers in it already. And then two can really uh, give me the opportunity to amend the soil over time and get that going but these bugs are disrespectful but yeah it's coming along so the christian out here flexing muscles all right and then the other give that one a little bit more no i'm sorry the next one Thank you. Then we're gonna do all right we got one more to fill up at the moment then we're gonna get the <laughs> plants in the ground
Use all bag? Mm-hmm. And, and you still gotta use half of another bag. These flies are disrespectful. These what? Flies. Let's take it out. Yep. So we're gonna get the sugar bell again from Stan McKenzie at McKenzie Farms in South Carolina in Scranton, South Carolina at that. So he has them grafted on, a, I believe, a trifoliate rootstock, which gives it the ability to endure a lot more cold. Yes, you're definitely going to have to loosen up that root structure. And what I did with the other ones, I actually took a good portion of the bottom of it off. Okay, Devin. So you want to loosen that because clearly it's root bound, but it's good height and good length. So it does have a good start, has a lot of good root system there. Look at all those roots. You wanna, that's, you see why I said take the port, uh, oh, part take of the bottom. Like yes. Off? Okay. All right, this might be annoying to some cause I'm like legit pulling the roots. But this plants are not as can you come this way? <laughs> oh, Thank you. Want you. To see, my bad. Plants are not as um, fragile as most people believe that they are. Oftentimes, they will adjust accordingly. And plus, we need to loosen up this root structure anyway to give the roots an opportunity to spread. So, if you hear tearing and ripping, yes, I'm stressing the plant. But one good thing about citrus is when you do stress it, it does go into like shock mode and it tries to save itself by reproducing Shh. and then when it reproduces it sets itself to bloom so go ahead hmm. you could get it in there a little further christian okay there you go and then just mound it all around it. Okay. And then we'll put mound it all around it. Keep going. You can get some of the soil from the outside and put on the inside. And then we'll just put the wood chips on the outside. So mound it to secure it in place. And then I'm going to slide this metal piece down. Give it a little bit more stability. There you go. So I will come back and I will mound them. And then we'll go ahead and put the wood chips. But that's kind of the gist of it there. Alright, so here we go. This is how it is coming along so far. I watered them in really good. But I'm going to continue to give it a little bit more water. And then I'm going to water the ones that are still in containers as well. So, let's go down the list. This one is an Awari Satsuma. This one is the Miwa kumquat. This one is a sugar bell. It's like a tangelo. This one is the Meyer lemon. You can never go wrong with a Meyer lemon. Blood orange. And then these three we still have left to do and I'm gonna squeeze another one in down here because this one is one that I had in the ground last year. There was a good bit of dieback because I didn't cover it at all but it still came back with no cover at all and it's a small plant so i'm going to put that right here i'm going to move my blueberries that i not blueberries blackberries that i propagated these bugs are really disrespectful and i'm gonna put another one of those over here so let's go through this one more time awari satsuma miwa kumquat sugar bell which is tangelo meyer lemon and this is going to be a sanguinella blood orange this one is a bloom sweet grapefruit this is a brown select satsuma and the nogami kumquat those two back there are going to just those are mangoes and they're going in um bigger pots but those are going to be going in and out of the house in the winter time um and then i do have I do have a key lime in the house that I've got a up pot that I got from Stan McKenzie as well. So, yeah, it is coming along. Thank you for following along on the journey. My figs behind me and my lovely garden. And everything is waking up and 
things are moving a lot slower than I want it to, honestly. But it is what it is. As long as I get a little bit done every single day, I am content with the progress. So one thing as Lead Farmer 73 has said, gardening takes patience because you need a lot of patience to make this happen. It doesn't happen overnight. Think you don't get a harvest overnight. You have to sow that seed and hope that it will fruit for you. It doesn't always fruit for you. Sometimes it dies on you. So you gotta stay motivated. You gotta stay persistent and eventually you'll have an abundance. And that is the beauty of all of this, is having more than what you need. And you can actually, at that point, either share or you can choose to sell whatever your intentions are, preserve, put away. But my goal is to be able to eventually get to a point of having 90% of my food source, if not more, from the, the land that I cultivate. Um, whether it is meat, um, which I got quails coming next week. I'm excited about that. Um, meat, you know, meat as far as quail, rabbits, chicken. Eventually, when I get more land, I want to have obviously bigger animals. Um, so, yeah, but just give you a quick look at what I was able to get done within an hour's time. So, I give myself an hour to two hours every single day. I will get all of this done eventually, <laughs> maybe not, but <laughs> I'll get a good, you know, bulk of it done. But here, take another peek at it until next time. So here is what is going to be my citrus lane. I've got three more boxes here that needs to be done. And I'm gonna put another one at the end. So I need more cardboard, which means I have to unpack some more stuff, but it's coming together. And when this really takes off, and yes, they get big. Yes, I can see the comments coming in. You've got them too close, too close to the house. That's the beauty of pruning. And then with it being on the cold hardy rootstock it's not going to get that big anyway see if i could take a step back beautiful i love when my vision starts to come to fruition